Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Stockwatch with me, Zinati Kuma, and joining me to take your stock-related questions tonight is Rekas Riedas from PSG Hole in One Reimsich. Uh, please be sure to send uh, your questions on email at stockwatch at uh, bdtv.co.za or via SMS on 41392 or on X using the hashtag Stockwatch. Thank you so much for your time, Rekas, and glad to see that you are wearing green, the color of the JSE today. But something that is not so green is Richmond. Uh, quite a few questions yeah. that have come out uh, uh, on Richmond. And as I was looking at the graph, I see that it's actually been down since August the 22nd, but then it got really hit from about the 3rd of September. And even today, it's down uh, more than 1%. So one of the questions um, is, uh, yeah, could you please ask uh, Rikus, uh, does he know the reason? For the five to six percent drop in Richmond, uh, that was before, and then today a further one uh, percent drop. Okay, there's there's two factors here. The first is more global and um, has to do with the luxury sector in general, yeah. which is uh, in a downtrend because Chinese demand is basically um, uncertain, if I can use that word. It's um, it's. Uh, it's a broad thing amongst the Chinese consumer. They're not spending locally. They're not spending offshore. They're simply not spending. And 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 Richmond and all the luxury brands are are pretty big in China. So that so that affects their revenue. Something else that affects the Richmond share price in Rand is obviously Rand strength. So that mm. contributes to the decline as well. Seeing that Richmond doesn't earn, you know, it doesn't earn in Rand, so a stronger Rand is not that good for them. Mm. And if you take a look at a graph of Richmond, as you said, it's 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 back to where it was round about in I think April of this year, um, and at a pretty important support level. So it's, if you if you want to apply technical technical analysis to it, yeah. if it, if it doesn't yeah. hold these levels to start going lower, then um, it could very well head down to the sort of um, two two level, you know, um, two hundred two thousand two hundred level again. Mm. Rickers, would you say that there's just basically a general overhang as you talk about, you know, for example, the Chinese consumer where we are seeing lack of demand, just a general overhang uh, on Richmond that maybe kind of makes it attractive because the pricing is uh, more, uh, is lower? Well, well, I don't like to be in sectors uh, which are experiencing negative sentiment, and the luxury sector in general is doing that. So it doesn't matter whether you're a sail boat or a rowing boat; you're going to go down as as mm -hmm. as the tide goes goes out. So at some level, it's going to be attractive. Um, you know, even even taking a look at the revenue growth in other parts of um, of the globe, apart from China, they're not doing too badly, but um, in the end, um, even very good results will, will not turn this against the herd. In other words, mm. all luxury stocks are going down, Richmond's going down. Wait for the, sec for the um, sector sentiment to improve and then start taking a look and say, okay, which of, you know, your Burberry's or Richmond or yeah. whichever one you want to want to choose which one is the most attractive fundamentally. Ah, all right. Because let's go into uh, um, hospitality. Uh, there was actually uh, a question here. Let's start off with City Lodge. City Lodge has had a significant rally, and I guess people are excited for incoming year-end results. What do you think of the prospects? Uh, is, is there excitement uh, around the <laughs> incoming results of uh, City Lodge? I think... I think that whole hospitality sector has been um, doing very well. If you take a look at Sun and Sons, um, Sun International, City Lodge, in fact, Sun International has been doing better than them, mm. City Lodge. And I think the reason for that is the um, 
extra revenue stream that Sun International has out of out of online gambling. But the fact remains that although um, tourism, specifically offshore tourism, has um, contributed to the rebound in the fortunes of, of your hotel and leisure groups, it's nowhere near, specifically offshore, nowhere near the levels where it was pre-COVID. So there is the possibility that um, given the right economic climate and also political climate, that that um, influx from offshore visitors can increase, which would put them in a in a very good spot. And let's face it, if you take a look at the South African economy, apart from the services sector, you know, banks or whatever, mm -hmm. um, well, the hospitality and services as well, but we don't have a manufacturing base. We've got a f financial base and, and we've got resources. The only thing which is, um, or the only sector which is there for the taking in the sense that you don't have to build mountains and swimming pools and casinos, well, you've got to build casinos, but you know what I mean. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The country is so attractive that given stability, political, economy-wise, um, it's almost a no-brainer that people will come and visit. Yeah. And just on Sun International, you mentioned that it is doing better than a city lodge. A uh, question there, can I still add to the position I have? And of course, you've seen uh, quite a good run from about July uh, on Sun International. Do you think that maybe mm. this could still be an opportunity to go into the stock? Um, I think on the in the very, very, very short term, and that's just from a price momentum perspective, it's probably... Uh, ran a little bit too quickly and too high, but I'm certainly looking for my own um, portfolios to add yeah. if we have a pullback. On the other hand, there's always the other hand, if it breaks convincingly above the 45, 50 rand level, then um, having built a base over the past um, year and a half almost, two years almost, it can go very much higher, and I don't think it's mm. it's um, that expensive. But just from a trading perspective, I think the past week or two weeks worth of rally is probably a little bit too big. Yeah, all right. Um, let's go into tech, uh, something that's been very, very uh, volatile, um, Rikus, and that's also just been making the broader markets in uh, the uh, U.S., uh, yeah, very, very uh, volatile. So the, the uh, question goes, I'm very confused. Uh, with everyone saying that uh, tech is way too overvalued, uh, but no other companies have such an important position as many of these tech companies. Uh, what are the chances the NASDAQ 100 will continue to outperform for the next 20 years? Uh, Rikas, I know that you do not have a crystal ball there, but let's go on to uh, the second part of that uh, question. There's a, um, a few tech companies that seem to be trading at quite attractive values today in simple analysis. Amazon, um, Alphabet, MasterCard, Visa. All these companies have incredible pricing power, especially Visa and MasterCard. What would you make of these ones that the viewer says uh, are attractive, uh, Rikas? Well, I think let's just split it, you know, the um, into two lots. On the one hand, you'll have um, Visa and Master MasterCard, and on the other, mm -hmm. MasterCard side and Visa, of, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and on the other side, you've got the rest. Yeah, I like both Mastercard and Visa, but and I think it should be a corporate or a core portfolio holding, and um, should be bought on any kind of pullback or any type of advance beyond um, beyond previous highs. So I'm very comfortable in holding Visa at the moment. If I'm if I were underweight to them, I would be adding right now. Mm. Um, Amazon, um, who's the others that you mentioned? Amazon and uh, Alphabet. 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 Um, again, like both of them as well. The interesting thing about Alphabet, or shall I just call them Google, so we all know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, for the first time in their history, they've paid a dividend. Um, I think they should have done this a few years ago. But I like companies that um, have a dividend growth profile. Yeah. And if... And if that's the case with Google, obviously we don't know with only one dividend. But a tech stock that starts paying dividends is, to me, always good news. So I like Google. Mm. And Amazon, um, just fundamentally, um, I like as well, and specifically um, the growth in their, in their service side of, of the business. Whether 
right now is the correct price to buy the map. Um, again, short-term stuff. Yes. I'm not too sure. Remember, we are sitting in September. That's historically the worst month um, for markets. Yeah. And that data goes back 100 years, if you take a look at the Goldman Sachs numbers. They've even got a date for it. Mm. Market turns in September on the 6th, <laughs> which, interestingly <laughs> enough, no, I'm serious. Yeah. 100 years, worth, 100 years worth of data. And that's, interestingly enough, also the date for uh, the American jobs mm. employment numbers that's coming through, which oh, is a okay. huge, huge number for this week. Okay. So we're going to be keeping our eyes are open and our ears to the, to the ground tomorrow. Um, Rick, just also specifically on MasterCard and Visa, there's a trade that uh, the viewer uh, actually wants to explore. You said that you like both of them. I, I bought shares in MasterCard last week, but I'm considering whether or not to use CFDs to maybe go long on Visa. Would this be a trade, uh, yeah, a reasonable trade? I don't know. I've, I don't do... <laughs> um, I don't do futures, so um, I've got no idea what the what the delta and gamma and and, yeah. and anything of that is at the moment. But yeah, if you're if you're positive on the share itself and yeah. you can and you want to risk the gearing um, involved with a with the CFD, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to do it, but um, it's fairly obvious that that if you like something and, and as I said and and you can. And your risk profile suits gearing then yeah yeah one would do that ah all right before we go to the break uh, uh Rikas, i just want to quickly uh, touch on a south 32. uh is a south 32 a good investment of course one of the uh, diversified uh, miners mm. uh would this be one that you're looking at at this point it's a mining share so it's never an investment it's always a trading vehicle mm. um so let's get that out of the way so yeah. let's compare them with other mining cyclical stocks um the focus is a little bit different from your big international well or shall we say they they're far more localized than your big international groups like lencore and Bulletin. yes okay and and, and Anglo, but i think it's a well-run company and and it's one of those that can outperform specifically your big international companies when your commodity cycle points the right way, which mm. it isn't at the moment. Mm. True. Let's go into property, uh, Rikas. Uh, but I don't know if uh, this one is on your radar. I don't think uh, too many people look at this one. Burstone, uh, which is previously the uh, Investec Property Fund, um, looks to be a uh, very good but underrated share. It is currently expanding in Europe, Germany and Australia. The share price is fair and twice a year there is a small dividend what is your feeling? I don't know if this is one that you would look at. Maybe you look at other property shares uh, that are uh, that do have uh, that global exposure. Yeah, I think I, I'm not I'm not um, that into Burstone. I know that it um, a deal a few weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, which yeah. was which was um, um, financing their expansion. But it's not one, um, admittedly, that I've. Um, looked in too closely, and not because I don't like best, and it's just that um, for my portfolios, I've um, invested in Nepi Rock as far as uh, uh, the equity accounts, and I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. So I haven't okay. had reason to to go, um, you know, fish somewhere else at the moment. Ah, uh, all right. Uh, Rikas, let's take a look at some of the questions that have come through. Uh, I have seen one that is asking about City Lodge, Coronation and ShopRite. Of course, we've already spoken about City Lodge. Let's go into Coronation. Yes, they're finally getting the dividend that, that SARS didn't want them yes. to pay. So, that, so that's good news. <laughs> I've, um, yeah, your peer asset manager, um, um, has fallen out of favor, I think, in general in the market. So, so it's um, so I'm I'm not casting any doubt as to the um, leadership and the investment capabilities of the coronation staff. But the fact is that, as a sector, um, they are not in favor at the moment. Yeah. Um, as people have moved into into passive funds. Um, 
you've got a problem if you if you're only an investment manager unlike for example PSG who's got the investment branch but also um, go out and, and and basically look for clients and, and coronation doesn't really have that so so how so how are they going to improve their asset base because that's what fund management is about mm. the bigger um, asset base that you manage the bigger your fees are um but interestingly enough i think if one takes a look through the coronation um, um what they're holding they're all very deep value things which doesn't mean that they're necessarily valuable but um if we get a surprise in global growth to the to the upside that could be to the benefit at least as mm. uh, as far as the assets are concerned and the growth in that specific no in the prices of those assets but um i really think there are better opportunities Ah, all right. Well, uh, talking about growth, Eric, is uh, a share, uh, a company that does manage to grow uh, its uh, earnings base, even with the subdued economic growth that we are seeing in South Africa, is ShopRite. Uh, and uh, it is above the 300 uh, per share uh, mark there. Uh, the viewer asking about ShopRite. Uh, what did you make, particularly after the results that they produced this week? Well, the market, the market wanted more. Um, I thought they were given the circumstances, and it's and it's not merely one data point for the past number of years. Mm. They um, they've done what they do very well, and it comes through in the results. Um, they are pricing um, at um, at current levels, so um, you don't really want to see a further slow down in consumer spend in South Africa because even if you're the best retailer in the country it's going to affect you and if you're sitting at that kind of price earnings um, it will affect your share price even more mm. um, not that I'm saying one should be selling it outright at the moment but I'd be very careful to um, to add or, or go overweight in the stock at the moment if you want a retailer for the long term, mm -hmm. even then I don't know whether the current price will give you the kind of return that you want. But it's certainly one that I would, you know, if we do get um, a sudden downturn in the short term, I would I would stock up and shop right. Ah, all right. Well, um, there's a broader question on SA Inc. Uh, is there an ETF that covers the coming, hopefully, surge in SA Inc.? We did get a surge in SA Inc. after the uh, GNU announcement. And I guess maybe people are also hoping that we're going to get a further surge uh, after interest rates start coming down. Is there an ETF, uh, Rikas? Uh, would you be going into an ETF for, for you know, broad uh, exposure into a surge in SA Inc.? Or maybe would you be doing more of stock picking or maybe sector picking there? Um, okay, I'm not an expert on ETF, but I don't think I've seen anything that, you know, apart from yeah. um, an ETF that, that covers the mid-cap index, which will sort of capture some of those left behind, if I can call them, they say in, in stocks, but nothing that that um, defines itself as a... Um, as a specific and... Um, talking about industrials here because this this is where the ESA, ESA Inc. Um, um, story comes in. So what I would like is an ETF that that um, concentrates on the industrial sector and within that those companies which will benefit from a change in fortune because of GNU or whatever. Mm. I don't think there's anything that is that specific. One does get um, um, an ETF that um, focuses on value measure, measurements. In other words, they would have a couple of um, ratios, whether it be price to book or return on equity or dividend yield, and and um, that gives you um, a value index, yeah. which, which to a certain extent will catch them as well, but no ETF specifically. Mm. Rikas, uh, there's one, as we were talking about, a shop writer is going to pick and pay. Um, can you explain how the uh, possible unbundling uh, of Boxer from Pick and Pay will impact you if you have shares in Pick and Pay. Uh, will the Pick and Pay shares drop in value? 
Um, well, okay, let's let's take box out of the picture because mm -hmm. the campaigners can get money from that in order to help them with their debt and yes. and trying and to turn the turnaround, the yeah, business around. Okay, so Boxer, yeah, is doing well. Obviously, there's no from my side no price history or anything that I'm going to try and determine what the trend's going to be. But we all know that what the problem is with pick and pay, um, and throwing at the money or throwing money at the problem might not work out. It really will need very, very good management. Mm. Now, they have obviously brought back um, you know, um, previous management that can turn it around, but it is still like any plan. You know, it's a 50-50 thing, specifically in the precarious position that the comparison where, where they are really struggling with um, liabilities. So um, if they do turn around, wonderful. Um, Shells will be very happy. If not, um, you know, even if they just amble along, you know, where's your price growth going to come from? Yeah. Specifically in the SOE time market where you really have to, um, guess what? You're up in competition against ShopRite, which is why something like Spa, Spa to me is very more interesting where they've just got rid of a huge prop um, in the form of their Polish business. So they so they don't have the legacy, or as much of the legacy that pick and pay will be sitting with, right now after they've um, unbundled boxing. Um, and it, it's quite interesting that the additional question that the viewer asks if there will be a further drop in value in pick and pay once the unbundling is done. Is there a mechanical um, reaction that you expect, um, or is it just? Because I would imagine that with the nana bundling, there would be an increase in the value of pick and pay shares. Um, unless I'm wrong, is there any kind of mechanical um, yeah, reaction that we can expect there? No, I'm sure there's an accountant that can answer that to you. But, <laughs> but in effect, you know, you've, you've got a hole, you're, a hole of a thing, you're getting rid of a part of it. What you're left with is less than the hole. So, so the price should drop by the value of the... Okay. Um, boxer that they are selling but but that's just that that in itself is mechanical exactly what that quantum is um as i said i'll leave that to an accountant mm. all right and hopefully we can get, <laughs> get an accountant to answer that on the emails uh because before we get to, to your stock pick today uh going into uh platinum uh, surely the pgms have bottomed now uh, are they a buy and which one would be best on a five-year outlook? I mean, you've already said uh, mine is generally not for long-term investment for you, rather trade. So a five-year outlook mm -hmm. is not on the cards for you, uh, for PGMs, uh, Rikas? If somebody asks me, surely X, Y, and Z, there's two questions. Is, you know, how sure are you and how do you know that? Um, I don't think there's anybody that can answer to that question when the question is surely the platinum price has bottomed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't like, I don't do predictions, but I do have opinions. You know, if I car, if I see a car racing at a hundred kilometers towards a wall, that's an opinion <laughs> that mm -hmm. I might that I might give. It's not a prediction as to what would happen, but. Coming back to the platinum price, it's at $910, I think, an ounce at the moment. They've had a little bit of rally. But what does the general industry look like for platinum's industrial use? Um, Volvo in Switzerland has just scrapped their plans, their previous plans where they were going to produce only electrical vehicles. They've they said, well, this isn't going to work. So the um, enthusiasm surrounding um, electrical vehicles are waning. So that might be a case for the platinum or the precipitous drop of the platinum price um, mm -hmm. starting to slow down. But I cannot see at the moment any turnaround in that yet. Ah, uh, all right. Well, uh, Rikas, let us get to your stock pick for today. What are you choosing for us? It's um, property as well, but this time in the US, the company is called Realty Income Fund. They've been in existence for, I don't know, 50 or 60 years. They've never dropped their dividend in, um, I, th I think, since since they started off. They're unique in property in, in that they concentrate mostly on, on the commercial markets. 
but they don't have specific big property. They've they've got over a thousand five hundred different commercial properties that are normally uh, uh, being run by single entities. You know, whether it be a hardware store or a um, a specific retailer, and they choose those retailers first of all that all of um, the tenants must have a triple A credit rating and then from realty's perspective as well, they must, they will only rent a property to a business that they consider, realty considers to be um, recession proof. So it's mm. a um, steady income and dividend generator. In fact, they pay the dividends monthly. They're sitting on a 5% perspective for dividend yield. If we are going into a softer, um, a soft landing or even recession in the US, you've got um, a very good annuity income at a very good rate considering falling interest rates in the US. And I think it's a pretty safe bet um, in the uncertainty for the next year or two as we, as we see what happens with US growth specifically. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and your analysis today, Eric. It's much appreciated. That is all for tonight's Stock Watch. Thanks to my guest, Eric Riedis from PSG Hall in One Reimsich. Up next, the close. Stay tuned. <laughs>